Okay. So now the question number one. Which statement about a solid, a liquid, or a gas is correct? A solid has a fixed shape. Yes, correct. But it can be compressed. It is wrong. Similarly, a liquid takes the shape of the container it is in and can be compressed. So the first part is correct, but the second part is wrong because liquids cannot be compressed. A solid has no fixed shape. This is wrong and cannot be compressed. It is correct. So in this way, you can see half of the statement is correct while the remaining half phrase is wrong. So all of these are wrong. So definitely that would be the correct answer. But now read it. A gas takes the shape of the container it is in. Yes, this is correct. And can be compressed. Yes, a gas can be compressed because according to kinetic molecular theory, particles in gas are far apart. So the correct option is D. Now see which diagram represents a mixture of a compounds. It means it is a mixture. Mixture can be of two elements. Mixture can be of one element and one compound. And a mixture can be of two compounds. So see individually each box. So in first one, these are the molecules represented by solid circle and the empty circle. It represents that there are two types of uh, different monoatomic gases. So it could be the mixture of two elements. So it cannot be the mixture of compound, but it is a mixture of elements. Now, this is a compound. How can you find that it is a compound? Because these two atoms belong to the same element. That's why they are represented same empty circle. But the third one is represented by the solid circle. So it shows a compound. And it shows the molecule of an element, a diatomic molecule, which uh, have the same atoms, identical atoms. So it is a mixture of an element and a compound. Element and compound. So again, it is not for compound. Now see here, one compound is this and one compound is this. These are two different combinations. So these are the compounds. If you observe other particles, then these are also the molecules of either like this or this. So this is the correct option that is a mixture of compounds. D, if you see the D, D is a pure compound. So the correct option is C. Uh, in question number three, four ions are listed. N three minus, aluminum three plus, lithium plus and chloride. Which pair of the ions have the same electronic configuration? Remember that same electronic configuration means same number of electrons. Same number of electrons. So see, nitrogen, the atomic number of nitrogen is seven and minus three means it has gained one more electron. So it is seven plus, oh, sorry, three more electrons. So the total number of electrons are 10. Here the atomic number of aluminum is 13, but it has lost three electrons. So 13 minus three is also 10. If you see the lithium, atomic number of lithium is three and plus one sign indicates that it has lost one ion, one electron. So the total number of electrons are two. 
chloride the atomic number of chlorine is 17 and it has gained one electron that's why it is minus one so total number of electrons are 18. so nitride nitride and the aluminium ions are isoelectronic so where this this is the correct option so b is the correct answer Now question number four, which is statement about isotopes is correct. So first, uh, uh, make your mind clear that isotope have same atomic number means value of Z, but uh, different, different <laughs> value of A that is nucleon number or the mass number. Atoms with Different numbers of electrons or isotopes of each other. No, they could be ions. Atoms with the same number, same mass number are isotopes of each other. No, same atomic number, but different mass number. Isotope of the same elements have different number of neutrons. Yes, correct. Isotopes of the same element have different number of protons not possible because they must have the same Z. So the correct option is C. Question number five, which statement about the ions formed by the element in group seven of the periodic table is correct. All the ions have the same charge of minus one. If it is group seven, then it could be correct because they have seven electrons in their valence orbit. So after gaining one more electron, their octet would be completed. So it could be correct. All the ions have the same number of electron shells now because they are in different periods. So definitely their number of shells are different. So it is wrong. Each ion is found by losing one electron No. Each ion is formed by gaining one electron. Wrong. Each ion, each ion has seven electrons in its outer shell, outer electron shell. No. Now, atom has seven electrons, but after making an ion, the number of electrons in the outer shells are eight. So it is also wrong. So the correct option is A. Which row describes the properties of potassium bromide? You know, potassium bromide, this is metal, this is non-metal. So a compound between metal and non-metal is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds are usually soluble in water and especially the compounds of potassium and sodium. Almost all the compounds of potassium and sodium are water soluble. So these can't be the correct answer. So we should think about B and D. Melting point, these are the ionic compounds. Ionic compounds have very high melting points, so it could not be the answer. So more chances are for this one. Ionic compounds uh, are, uh, when solid, they are bad conductor of electricity or the poor conductor of electricity, so it is correct. So the correct option is D. Question number seven is statement, which statement explains why graphite is used as a lubricant? A, each carbon atom in graphite forms the three bonds. Although the statement is correct, the statement is correct, but whether it is a, it, it has any link with the lubric, lubricant property of graphite, so answer is no. This statement about graphite is correct, but it has no link with the lubricant property of the graphite. That's why A is wrong. The bonding in graphite is covalent. The statement is again correct, but it has no link with its lubricant property. The carbon atoms are arranged in hexagon. The statement is again correct, but it has no link with the lubricant properties. D, 
there are weak forces of attraction between the layers of carbon atoms. Yes, in graphite, uh, multiple hexagonal layers are formed and between them there are weak forces which cause them to slide on one another. That's why graphite is lubricant. So the correct option is D. Now, question number eight. What is the balanced equation for the reaction between magnesium and dilute sulfuric acid? Remember that magnesium is um, a reactive metal. When it reacts with dilute sulfuric acid, it produces its respective salt, uh, means uh, metal from metal ions from the metal and uh, sulfate from the sulfuric acid. While this hydrogen it comes here while hydrogen gas is liberated. So the correct option could be A because it follows it. Magnesium displaces hydrogen. This is a displacement reaction that displaces hydrogen ions in the form of hydrogen gas. And it is also the redox reaction that magnesium is being oxidized while hydrogen ion are being reduced. And here the formula of magnesium sulfate is wrong because magnesium belongs to group two. So it has two plus charge. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion. It also has two minus charge. So two is canceled by the two. So ultimately the answer is MgSO4. So it is wrong. Again, the formula of magnesium sulfate is wrong. So this is also wrong. And again, the formula of magnesium sulfate is wrong. That's why it is wrong. Otherwise, they have mentioned the same product. But the difference is the whether the formula of magnesium sulfate is correct or wrong. And due to that, balancing is also affected. Anyway, so the correct answer is A. Uh, the relative atomic mass of an element is the average mass of isotopes of that element compared to another particle. So the definition of relative atomic mass is the mass of an element is the average mass of isotopes of that element compared to the 112 part of the carbon 12. So this is directly from the definition. So correct option is B. It cannot be compared with proton or calcium 40 or hydrogen one. So the correct option is B. The equation for the two reactions are given carbon and carbon dioxide combine together to form carbon monoxide. Actually, it is the reduction of carbon in carbon dioxide or oxidation of carbon into carbon monoxide. Both are correct. In equation two, ethane is combusted and it produces four molecules of carbon dioxide and water, which shows that the value of X, the value of Y, and the equation that are for redox reaction. Okay. So value of X, value of X, is equal to one. Is it possible? No. It should be two. So this option can be eliminated here. Okay. Now, why three is wrong or correct? Let's see. Two, six, or 12, there should be 12 hydrogen. So if there should be 12 hydrogen, so why value of Y should be six? So C, where is six and two? So B is also wrong, but it could be correct. But C, where? Redox reaction is one or one and two both. Both are redox reaction. One is redox reaction because of carbon and carbon dioxide. And equation two is also redox reaction because here carbon is changing its oxidation state. So the correct option is D. Question number 11, 
concentrated aqueous sodium chloride is electrolyzed. So it is related to electrochemistry using graphite electrode. Graphite are inert electrode. Inert electrode, which do not participate in electrochemical reaction. Okay. What is the product formed at cathode? So remember that uh, sodium ions cannot be reduced in presence of hydrogen ions. So at cathode, uh, only positive ions, positive ions can be reduced. So positive ions are reduced. So only the chance if, if you see the sodium chloride solution. So there are sodium ion and chloride ion, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So the chances of being oxidized, being reduced is only for hydrogen. So when hydrogen ions from the water are reduced, they produce hydrogen gas. So the product is hydrogen. B is the correct answer. Now, question number 12. Which row describes the changes that occur when metal burn in oxygen? So there must be a metal oxygen ionic compound that would be produced. And during this, uh, temperature will increase and metal is definitely oxidized. So correct option is C. When calcium carbonate is heated strongly, calcium carbonate is heated, it produces carbon dioxide. Which words describe the type of change that occurs? So, it is a decomposition reaction. Calcium carbonate decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So it is a decomposition reaction. So decomposition reaction means it should be endothermic. So answer should be A or B. Whether it is a chemical process or the physical change, so definitely it is a chemical process because chemical nature of the compound or the substances is being changed. So answer is A. 14, which row about hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is correct? It is a fuel cell. Chemicals are used, so chemical energy is being transferred to the electrical energy. So either A or B is the correct answer. Secondly, here hydrogen and oxygen are used as a reactant. So it could not be correct, but it is correct. So the correct option is A. Now in number 15, which list contain only chemical changes? See, melting, evaporation, dissolving. These all are physical processes. Rusting is a chemical process where oxide is formed, oxide of metal is formed. Freezing is a physical process. Cracking of hydrocarbon is a chemical process. So first and the last are chemical processes, but freezing is the uh, physical process. Neutralization is a chemical process, acid-base reaction. Polymerization, formation of a large molecule from by uniting the small molecule. Combustion is the burning to produce the oxide of the respective compound, especially for hydrocarbons. So it looks correct. But see the last option as well. Boiling is the physical process. Condensing is also physical. Distillation is also physical. So the correct option is C. Question number 16. Excess of calcium carbonate is added to 50 centimeter cube of dilute hydrochloric acid 
of different concentrations in two separate experiment. In, se in experiment number one, the concentration of acid was 0 0.2, while in experiment number one, two, concentration was half of that. So rate of reaction definitely would be higher when the concentration of acid is greater. So the experiment number one, if you see the graph, volume of gas collected over the time, then directly see the graph without reading reading this. There must be a clear difference between the rate of reaction and it can be shown by the gradient of the curve. So here there is a there is more gradient, there is less. So it could be and it could be the answer. It could not be the answer because gradient is same. And it also, it is possible. But now see, here we have used the axis of calcium carbonate, so there is no deficiency or no limiting, uh, it is not the limiting reagent. So ultimately, more and more calcium carbonate can be utilized when the concentration is higher. So if you see the table, then the volume of gas collected in experiment number one is double as compared to experiment number two. So answer number, uh, option number A is rejected because it has collected the same volume of the gas, 120 for both of them. In exit number two, it is 120 and this as well as 120. In experiment number B, it is almost uh, half of that, any 59 and 120. Yes, it could be. And uh, it was already rejected. And now see here, here both of them are about uh, slightly greater than 50. Definitely it must be 59 or 60. So it is impossible that both of them have the same, uh, give, give the same volume of carbon dioxide. So the correct option is only this. Gradient is higher and volume is given here where it uh, becomes the horizontal or the constant. So the correct option is P. Now question number 17, an experiment is set up as shown. The mass of the conical flask and its content is measured at 30 second intervals. It means every after every 30 second, the change in mass is recorded here. So what is the question? Which statement about the reaction and the changes? to the reaction condition is correct. Adding 10 centimeter cube of water to the 50 centimeter cube of acid increases the rate of reaction. Uh, definitely it is wrong because adding water will dilute the acid further. So decreasing the concentration means decreasing the rate of reaction. So it will not increase. This is wrong. Increasing the size of the piece of the calcium carbonate increases the rate of reaction is also wrong because if the size of the uh, particle, any larger piece pieces will be used for one gram, the same mass, then the surface area would be lesser. So definitely it would also affect the rate of reaction, uh, rate of reaction, but it will not increase, but decrease the rate of reaction. So B is also wrong. Increasing the temperature increase the rate of reaction, yes. Because always increase in temperature increases the rate of reaction because it causes more collision and more molecules would pass or would have the energy greater than or equal to energy of activation. So C is the correct option, but let's see what is D. The mass of the conical flask and the content increases as carbon dioxide found. Definitely wrong because 
when carbon dioxide is evolved from here, so then mass will decrease. Now see question number 18, which reaction is reversible? A reaction of aqueous sodium hydroxide and dilute hydrochloric acid. It is not reversible. Why it is not reversible? Because it is a reaction between a strong acid and a strong base. So it is always the complete neutralization. So it cannot be reversible. But the reaction of if any one of them is weak or both of them are weak, weak acid and weak base or a strong acid and weak base or weak acid and a strong base. Those reactions are reversible, but a strong acid and a strong base reaction is not reversible. Formation of anhydrous copper to sulfate from hydrated copper to sulfate. Yes, it is reversible because the water that is removed from the hydrated crystal can again combine to the anhydrous copper sulfate. Oxidation of methane to form carbon dioxide and water. It is not reversible because it is not mentioned that whether it is in open container or in a closed container. It could be a reversible reaction if the container was closed. Similarly, combustion of sulfur to sulfur dioxide could be the reversible reaction if the concentration was closed. Uh, sorry, if the container was closed. So right now it is also wrong. So only the correct option is B. 19. Silver oxide reacts with magnes to magnesium, sorry, to make silver and magnesium oxide. So here the oxidation state of silver is plus one. And here it is zero, magnesium is zero. Here silver is zero and magnesium is plus two. So here you can see here that uh, which substance oxidized, which substance is oxidized in this reaction. So the substance that is oxidized in this reaction is magnesium. It is oxidized to Mg2 plus. Okay. And if you think about silver, silver is being reduced. So the correct option is A. This is question number 20. Compound X dissolves in water to form an aqueous solution. So there is no chemical reaction. Methyl orange is added to aqueous compound X. The methyl orange turns red. If it turns red, then it means this is an indication that the compound is acidic in nature. Now see, what is compound X? Sodium carbonate? No, impossible because the solution of sodium carbonate is uh, alkaline. See. When sodium carbonate is dissolved in water, there is a hydrolysis reaction and uh, it produces sodium hydroxide and carbonic acid. So it produces a strong base and weak acid. That's why the solution is alkaline. Copper dioxide is a metal oxide. Metal oxides are acidic in uh, basic in nature. So it is also not possible. Potassium oxide is also alkaline in nature. When it is dissolved in water, it produces uh, potassium hydroxide. So the only possible answer is sulfur dioxide. It is, a, it is an oxide of non-metal and non-metal oxides are usually acidic in nature, although some of them are neutral. So correct option is D. Now the dilute hydro, uh, question number 21, dilute hydrochloric acid reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide in a neutralization reaction. So remember that uh, this is an, this is a strong 
alkali reaction with with a strong base it produces sodium chloride and water so actually in neutralization the main reaction that occurs is between hydroxide and hydrogen so the correct option is b when it was sodium hydroxide aqueous there were sodium ion and hydrogen ion uh, sodium ion and hydroxide ion when acid was in aqueous form then there was hydrogen ion and chloride ion so in both the cases chloride and sodium ions were already there and they are still there but the reaction occurs between oh and hydrogen ions so b is the correct option this is question number 22 the table shows some properties of some of the element from group 1 see lithium sodium potassium melting point decreases down the group correct reaction with water in rate of reaction increases correct lithium reacts uh, or the fizzes steadily sodium fizzes vigorously potassium fizzes very vigorously so definitely the elements below potassium would be more reactive and more violent to the water rubidium is also an element of group 1 of the periodic table which would describe the properties of rubidium uh, melting point definitely must be smaller than 64 so we can eliminate option c and d now we have a and b with the same melting point yes it is possible but the reaction with water is it slowly impossible because lithium fizzes slowly or steadily but uh, rest of the elements in group 1 reacts vigorously so the correct option is fizzes explosively it is correct copper to sulfate crystals are blue okay theek hai they are made up of they are made by adding an excess of copper to oxide to sulfuric acid excess of copper to oxide remember that copper to oxide is insoluble in water and it is in excess so when the reaction would be completed it would remain there the mixture is heated and stirred for making it to react the mixture is then filtered and filtrate is allowed to evaporate leaving blue crystals so this filtrate was left for several hours as a result evaporation occurs and the copper and sulfate ions combine together to form blue crystals of the copper sulfate so why is filtration necessary is it to remove soluble impurities no soluble impurities can come through the filter paper to remove the sulfuric acid impossible sulfuric acid number 1 uh, there is no sulfuric acid because it would be consumed because copper to oxide was in excess and secondly filtration cannot uh, remove sulfuric acid to remove the blue crystals no we are not mentioned here that we are fill uh, we we have performed the filtration for separating the crystals so it it is also impossible to remove unreacted copper to oxide yes it is correct so the correct option is d because filtration was uh, it it was done here at this stage question number 24 which barium salts are soluble in water remember that all the nitrates are soluble so even if you don't remember then you can answer this and uh, barium carbonate and sulfate remember that uh, barium is identified as sulfate so barium sulfate is definitely insoluble in water and carbonates of sodium and potassium are soluble and also the ammonium carbonate is soluble while rest of the carbonates are insoluble 
so it is also insoluble chlorides the chlorides of silver and lead are insoluble but rest of the chlorides are soluble so it is also soluble so the correct option would be two and three and not possible not possible yes it is correct so the correct option is c and here d This is question number 25. Which statement about the properties of elements in group one or in group seven is correct? Means uh, whether it is correct for group one or group two, group seven. So bromine displaces iodine from an aqueous solution of potassium iodide. Yes, it is correct. Because bromine is above iodine, so it can displaces iodide from the solution forming bromide and uh, iodine okay chlorine bromine and iodine are diatomic it is okay but gases at room temperature no because at room temperature iodine is solid and bromine is liquid so it is wrong it is correct c Lithium, sodium, potassium are non-metal, soft non -metal. They are soft, but they are not non-metal. So C is wrong. Lithium, sodium, and potassium have an increasing number of electrons in their outer shell. No, they all have the same number of electrons in their outer shell. So the correct option is A. 26, rubidium and strontium are both in period five of the periodic table means if there is a periodic table then in one of them is in group one and another is in group two which statement about these elements is correct a each element has five electrons in outer shell of electron no because it belongs to group one it has one outer electron means one valence electron and it belongs to group two so it has Two valence electrons. So A is wrong. B, the atomic number of rubidium is greater than the atomic number of strontium. G uh, The atomic number of rubidium is greater than the atomic number of strontium. No. Rubidium comes first, so it has lesser electronic number, um, atomic number as compared to strontium. Rubidium is 37 and strontium is 38. Rubidium forms uh, Rb plus 1 ion and strontium forms Sr2 plus ion. It is correct. Electrolysis of molten rubidium chloride and molten strontium chloride produces hydrogen. Impossible because in molten state there is no hydrogen ion. There is only one positive ion that is Rb. Rb plus. So impossible to generate hydrogen gas. So the correct option is C only. Now question number 30. The table shows the results of separate heating four metals with oxides of different metals. So here the name oxide is magnesium oxide, copper oxide, iron oxide, and Y is an unknown oxide. But we will compare the reactivity from here. So see here, iron cannot oxidize, uh, cannot uh, reduce magnesium. So it means magnesium is more reactive than iron, okay. Iron cannot reduce Y, so it means Y Ox, uh, why metal is more reactive than iron. So both the Y and magnesium are more reactive than iron. They are more reactive than iron. Copper oxide, uh, iron can reduce the copper oxide. So it means iron is more reactive than copper. 
it is also correct and definitely iron cannot oxidize its own uh, iron oxide it cannot reduce its own oxide so leave it now see copper cannot oxidize any of these so it means copper is the least one least reactive in this series so the either the option a or b is the correct because here copper is uh, on the least side least reactive side so we don't think about c and d eliminate these immediately now c magnesium can reduce the metal from its oxide why this 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 is it means magnesium is the most reactive as compared as compared to all of these so it means magnesium is the most reactive as compared to all of these in the given option so again it emphasizes that answer is either a or b but now see why why cannot oxidize uh, cannot reduce magnesium from its magnesium oxide so it means magnesium is more reactive than why okay then uh, it can oxidize it can reduce the copper from its oxide and iron from its oxide so it means it is more reactive than iron so if it is more reactive than iron so the correct option would be a so a is the correct answer for this because y is more reactive than iron we have deduced the other factors as well okay so it takes time to think but an easy question now question number 31 which metal is most easily obtained from its ore so find which of them is the least reactive so b is the least reactive that is copper if a metal is least reactive then it can be obtained from its ore easily as compared to other metals so b is the correct option Question number 33, which type of compound is also the name of the homologous series? So name of the homologous series would be carboxylic acid. The fractional distillation of petroleum is shown here. This is the fractionality column and different fractions can be obtained at their boiling point in the fractionality column. Which fraction is the least volatile? The least volatile are uh, below and uh, on the on above side, top side are the uh, least, uh, most volatile. So the least volatile is lubricating. Oil fraction, is there any? No. Diesel oil fraction, yes, it could be. Paraffin, paraffin is above. Bitumen, bitumen is here. So bitumen is the least volatile. So the correct option is A. Now see question number 35. Which formula represents the unsaturated hydrocarbon? If a formula does not follow CN, H2N plus 2, then it is unsaturated so see this is it follows cn h2n it could be unsaturated c3 h8 c3 h8 it could be it cannot be unsaturated because it follows cn h2n plus 2 C4H10 also follows CNH2N plus 2. 
4 to the 8 plus 2, 10. Similarly here, 5 to the 10, 10 plus 2, 15. So it also follows C and H to N plus 2. So the correct option is A. So A could be the unsaturated hydrocarbon. 36 also about uh, organic compound. The structure of the organic compound is shown. There is a carboxylic group and an alkene group. The compound is tested separately with thymophthalene is an indicator and with aqueous bromine. If it is an indica acid base indicator, so it can show the presence of carboxylic acid. And aqueous bromine reacts with double bond, means uh, olefinic bond, to form two addition of two bromine atoms on this adjacent carbon. So, which would describe the final color observed for each test? So, thymophthalene uh, is colorless in acidic medium. Even it can change its color around uh, 9 pH, pH 9 or above, and it becomes blue. And bromine, when bromine is added to unsaturated uh, position, then it becomes colorless. So in aqueous bromine, it should be colorless and it should be also be colorless. So the answer is C because thymophthalene gives no color in acidic medium and bromine decolorizes due to this unsaturation. So correct option is C. Which statement describes methane? It is an alcohol? No, it is a hydrocarbon. It is an unsaturated, unsaturated molecule. No, there is no carbon-carbon double bond. It has only one carbon atom. It contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms only. No, it has no oxygen. Methane, methane is CH4. There is no oxygen in methane. Definitely, the D would be the answer. Its molecule contains four single covalent bond. Yes, it forms four single covalent bond with hydrogen atoms in the form of tetrahedron. Now, question number 38, which explains why plastics such as polyethene cause pollution. Produce toxic gases when burned? Yes. So answer could be C or D. It is correct. It is correct. Accumulate in the ocean. Yes. So the correct option is D. Question number 39. Two experiments are described here. In one experiment, a large mass of copper to sulfate is stirred into a beaker of water. After a few minutes, undissolved crystals are visible on the bottom of the beaker. So which statement is correct? Uh, okay. For, uh, first, we should treat experiment number two as well. Sea water is distilled. Distilled water and the solid impure salt are separated. Definitely, if we have separated something, so impure substances can be separated by filtration into two containers. In experiment one, the undissolved crystals are the filtrate. No, undissolved substance cannot be filtered. In experiment one, the water is the solute. No. Substance that is dissolved is solute, so copper sulfate is solute. In experiment 2, sea water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. No, because sea water contains uh, some impurities. Impurities elevate the boiling point, so it would be greater than 100. In experiment 2, the impure salt is residue. Yes, it is possible. So D is the correct option. Question number 40, an aqueous sample of X is heated with aqueous sodium hydroxide and a small piece of aluminum. So think about this, a test tube, sample X is there, 
sodium hydroxide is also there aqua sodium hydroxide and a piece of aluminium is there and they have heated this and they have put a moist red litmus, litmus paper here and this red litmus paper turns blue so this whole experiment shows the presence of nitrate in the sample because nitrate nitrogen in nitrate is reduced to ammonia gas that turns red litmus blue in second experiment what they did aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to the second aqueous sample of x a pale green precipitate obtained a pale green precipitate so these uh, pale green precipitate could be of chromium or iron but this is pale green so pale green could not be for chromium chromium gives the dark green precipitate so the correct option would be c